Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are creating the ultimate beginner's guide to city skylines by creating the city of Tutoria. And in today's episode, we are going to introduce the Green Cities DLC into the city. And, you know, when I ranked the DLCs, I didn't realize how much this DLC means to the game. It is absolutely it, integral it's 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 a really fantastic dlc now i say that because it adds a ton to the game it adds over 350 new assets into the game so this is everything from single family homes all the way up to it cluster towers and a number of service buildings including the geothermal power plant the ocean thermal energy conversion plant the solar updraft tower the biofuel bus depot the community pool, the sports hall and gymnasium, the yoga garden, community school, Institute of Creative Arts, Modern Institute of Technology, floating garbage collector, recycling center, eco water outlet, eco water treatment plant, and a number of unique buildings including the Bird and Bee Haven, the Climate Research Station, the Lungs of the City, the Floating Gardens, the Ziggurat Garden, Central Park, uh, and, and one new monument, which is the ultimate recycling plant, and then three new district types, self-sufficient buildings, organic and local produce, and the IT cluster buildings. So this is really gonna help us here. We've been polluting this bay for quite some time. It is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> so this is where we're gonna start today. I wanna fix this. So we've got all of this pollution here, which is very easy to see when you click on this. We aren't drinking this, but it's sure ugly. So where we should start is cleaning up this right here. So one thing that we're gonna need to take a look at, we've got five of these. This is, uh, we're gonna wanna replace them with at least five of, of uh, the new plants. So the old water treatment plant, it's 160,000 uh, uh, cubic meters a week. This is the same. Now, the big difference that you're gonna see here is that the pollution is zero, but there is noise pollution. Here it says pollution is zero, noise pollution 15. Purifies 85% of the sewage. This uh, claims, it, you know, it doesn't, I guess it doesn't make a claim to how much that it, it cleans it, but it's, it's significantly better. Uh, and when you combine this with the floating garbage collector, you can really clean up your water. So that's what we're going to do. We could also look at having the eco water outlet, but it's, it's uh, just not quite as nice. So uh, it, it, it's not wholly gone, but the pollution, but it, it, it's better. So. Uh, we'll just pause this for a moment because we're going to really disrupt what's happening in the city. And we've added those five. And interestingly, it's not taking to the locations, not for all of them anyway. We'll just get rid of these and reconnect. That'll take just a moment to kick in. But when it does, we'll see that our sewage treatment returns to where it was just above okay. Okay, maybe just above okay. Oh, no, no, there it is. <laughs> so now we're looking good there. But even though this is going to help us with our pollution problem, if we turn this up and we take a look, we're going to see that immediately the pollution starts to dissipate. There's still some, but it's not bad. We're going to need to do something else to improve it. Uh, now, one of the things to know about these floating garbage collectors is, uh, number one, they do have a radius that they, they can clean more or less and you, you kind of see it here so you might need to grab this and move it around a little bit the other thing is it can't be in the way of, of like your ferry lines and things of that nature so just all things to keep in mind now I think we're gonna need a number of these to be able to clean up the mess that we've created so I'm gonna place a number of them I'll probably end up deleting most of these down the line but there's so much pollution here and so little current it's going to take a while to get this cleaned up. Now, I absolutely believe you don't need this many, uh, particularly if you had a, a strong current, you wouldn't need this at all. But, uh, you know, you might need it. It looks actually the water looks pretty clean coming from these. So maybe maybe it is. It, it's almost pure. It's not 100 uh, percent, but it's pretty darn good. And you can start to see what's going on with these. 
we're seeing that the water is cleaning up just around these these purifiers here and, and things are starting to look better so over time it'll get better this is also helpful uh, if we wanted to really uh, kick things up to the next level we could have moved one of these over here and had it spew water directly out into the bay but this will do the trick for now so i am uh i'm i'm, I'm fairly pleased with that so what we're going to do is continue to build our neighborhoods here and what we're going to think about in this area is is having a, a green and eco district now that we've got this we're starting to clean up the bay maybe this new neighborhood is really the reason why this happened uh, the, the folks that lived here wanted a green place to live so we are going over the former cheese district and we're gonna make something interesting happen so the first thing i want to do is i want to make sure that my streets make a little bit more sense than they did in the cheese district so i'm going to follow the terrain in fact i'm going to turn off the road guidelines and the grid entirely and now i'll turn them back on because i want to be able to really line up nicely that's not perfect but it's pretty good and we are going to be okay with it because we don't need to let perfect be the enemy of the, of, of the good in this instance this is just fine so let's go ahead and continue building now i do want to have my road guidelines on here because we're going to create kind of a, a strange morphed grid sometimes your guidelines just aren't going to do what you want them to you got to start over and that's okay too Okay, and this isn't perfect. It's pretty good, and that's gonna be good enough for me. I just want something that has a fair degree of connectivity so that people can walk around and not be entirely dependent on their vehicles for transportation. Even if this is a, a rather suburban area, it doesn't need to be entirely suburban. I think we'll keep it just like this. I like that. So we are going to go ahead and draw a district here because we are going to create a self-sufficient buildings district. And then around it, we are going to add in some areas of organic and local produce. Now we could go through and upgrade some of our old districts with these new district markers, but you gotta think of it this way. You upgrade those, all the old buildings are gonna go away. It's not that they, they just magically uh, will convert themselves, uh, which is, you know, if you look at high uh, high tech buildings, for instance, those that's just a, a building attribute. So it doesn't actually delete the building. These are a wholesale building change. So when I come through here and I go into the, the residential specializations now and I click on self-sufficient buildings, these are entirely different buildings than you would have seen uh, before we got this DLC added to the game. I'm going to pause it because Apparently, there's a very strong residential demand and people want to get in here before I'm done zoning. Now, the benefit to pausing is if you had a zoning issue, what you'd see happen is a building uh, that would, would take up just a portion of the lot and it would never fill in unless you delete the building and allow something bigger to spring up. So, didn't want that to occur, if at all possible. So, paused it, sat tight for a minute, and now we're looking better. So we need water pipes, put those underneath the road because that's where they belong. There we go. And now you start, you're starting to see a commercial demand growing. So we are going to take care of that right now. And I'm going to look at the terrain. I don't think there's much to contend with here. So we're just going to try to create some sort of roadway connectivity through here. Again, switching back and forth between the curved road tool and the freeform tool we just want to be able to make the best connections that we can and this really helps us we have road guidelines on we will be able to make perfect connections every time look at that nice connections and i'm going to make a connection here as well, we'll look at our terrain this is flat we'll send this out with a curved road and meet right up with our old ones and now we could figure out some way to use this land and I'm just going to try to maximize the number of lots that could be developed here so I think this is a bad design but <laughs> it's it, it could be worse uh, sometimes in cities you have bad designs and uh, it depends on the uh, really who designed it 
Was it the city? Was it a developer? Uh, what was their motivation behind it? Maximum number of lots that they could sell versus connectivity and uh, the ability to reuse the parcels in the future? What, what were the motivations? Hard to say. But these right here are clearly, this is about maximizing the number of lots you could sell and uh, that's why the design's a little funky. Uh, it's also working around the terrain, which can also give you some unique lot designs. Okay, so here we are going to go into the commercial specializations where we now have the organic and local produce specialization. And we're going to create a district here that has that specialization. Also going to bring this over here. We'll connect this right up and butt up against it. And I want to change one other thing. We have an opportunity here and we're going to take it and that is to improve our connectivity. So we've at least got some roadway connections through there. That'll that'll help out quite a bit. All right. So the we should take a look at what we're, we're, we're getting with these buildings. And you see that there's not grass in the lots. You have some of these floral trees, really modern looking buildings. It looks like they're it almost looks like some container homes or something. It's very, very cool looking buildings really a different atmosphere than you get with any other building in the game but it's not limited to just low-rise buildings you also get this with the higher rise buildings as well so why don't we go through and zone that as well have a little node of density in here now if you're going to add this density you really need to have some sort of transit access or bike access or something but uh, we haven't necessarily planned that just yet we're going to do the exact same thing with the organic and local produce Pull that over here and then as we get closer to this density we're going to increase the density here as well got a few water pipes to connect up and then we'll get the game running again and look at how quickly this is filling in <laughs> the demand is definitely there we're also on three times speed so i guess that'll do it i'm gonna turn it down to two times speed because we haven't added anything to this area to really improve it and make it a better place to live so I be believe it'd be a good idea to add some things like the community pool, the sports hall and gymnasium and uh, some schools. So I'm going to pause it for a moment. Interestingly, a number of these assets are under the healthcare. Uh, so I, I, I wouldn't necessarily think of the sports hall and gymnasium as a health facility, but it does improve people's health working out at the Y, for instance. That's good for you. So I guess there is some logic there. I'm going to add this. Well, that's actually probably the worst spot to add it because of the terrain. Why don't we add it to a flatter spot? We'll add it right here. And we have a community pool as well. I think I'm going to save this one for a second. We'll add in a yoga garden next to the... Kind of a close proximity to this. Density. So we'll have a lot of these buildings within close proximity to the density i think that's a wise choice so most people are going to are going to be so what you see here is that these they're going to raise the land value uh, they say that it, when you click down it says it gives some health benefit um the interesting thing is what you really see are visitors so it's a health building i, I don't i'm not 100 sure on, on how that factors uh but it's, it's really a tourism building as well. So uh, it, it, it helps with health and it helps with tourism. So, and it helps with land value, happiness. So good all around. So now let's take a look at some of our other buildings. We have our community school. I wanna add one of these here. It allows children to get an education. Uh, it's an alternative to an elementary school. The capacity is 250. The cost, 12,000. Right here, 300, cost 10,000. So I look at this as a private school has kind of a unique uh, look to it. Let's let's put this in here. We'll take a look at how it looks. See, it's got the green roof, the green uh, the green at the top of the building. It's very very attractive compared to the traditional school. And to go along with that, we also have the Institute of Creative Arts, which is a high school that has an 800 student capacity, thirty thousand dollars, prestigious high school, one thousand. 24,000. You're kind of starting to see the pattern now. These are smaller schools, but they're prestigious. It's the place that if you get your kid into it, you're feeling pretty good about their, their chances. So we're going to add that. And near there, 
rather than adding a tennis court like we normally do, why don't we add a pool? Now this is very hilly terrain. Uh, it might have made more sense to uh, level this first. That said, things get built in hilly areas. So you could just accept some of the terrain oddness. You could try to fix it or you could try to hide it. Just make it look a little bit more palatable. And I guess that's palatable palatable to me maybe <laughs> maybe you are uh, totally fine with the cliffs i know a lot of people have mentioned that that they are and i need to calm down and chill out i just can't do it and i'm gonna keep i'm gonna keep placing the grass down to hide that so there we go that looks a lot nicer in my book and we've used a number of the assets already that have come with this uh, but one that we haven't used is the modern technology institute so we do have a fairly significant university capacity. I am not going to uh, place this building, but I will show it to you. The reason why I don't want to place it is I don't want to kill Yumble you. Uh, so this is MTI, you know, MIT, MTI, and it is a very, very attractive asset. So certainly worth adding to your city if you need a university and you don't have the campus DLC. Still a very nice looking university. Look at this already. We've not had this going for very long. And we can see that most of our pollution, at least over here in the bay, is almost gone. Over here it's getting better. Unfortunately, we can't reach out here. I'm not sure how long it's gonna linger, but I assume a while. So, uh, we could start to decommission some of these. I'm gonna wait till the end of the episode. I'll let it go until then and then I will get rid of most of them, relocate a few in front of this to clean up whatever pollution comes out of here. Let's get this moving again, and we can place the last few assets that we wanna place in this area. I want to place a recycling center. So we've got these incineration plants, and that's just, doesn't really fit the vibe of this area. So the incineration plant has a processing rate of approximately 48,000 per week, costs $30,000, very loud, lots of pollution. This recycling center is half of that. In terms of cost, it's a little over half. In terms of pollution, half. Uh, or actually, it's a quarter. And for noise pollution, it is one-fifth. So this is a much better option near a residential area. But do keep in mind that you're going to need to place twice as many of them to have the same efficacy. So why don't we go about that? We're gonna place some of these here. We'll make a garbage uh, kind of plant. We've also got buses over here. That's kind of a holdover of the cheese district. I think we're gonna get rid of that because we can add a biofuel bus depot and I'll show you why that might be valuable as well. So this is another example of where leveling the terrain makes a ton of sense. We're gonna fix this, we can't let this sit. We're, we're better than that. Always look at your terrain before you place buildings like this. You will regret it if you don't. Trust me, I regret what I just did. So, <laughs> But you'll never regret your buildings looking nice. So that's where we're at now. So we don't have power here, and interestingly, we've got some options. We could certainly add power over here, uh, it, since we're making a public service campus. We could continue that theme over here. Why don't we? So we've got a couple of options that are new to us now. We've got the solar updraft tower, no pollution, a little bit of noise pollution, 240 megawatts output, 90,000 uh, for the cost. Geothermal, which is uh, you know, something you see a lot in like Iceland or something like that. The noise pollution is about the same. The cost, it's a little bit less but the power output's only 80 megawatts. You're gonna need tons more of these. So, uh, you know, it, you might decide to go that route because if you look at the size of this solar updraft tower, they're, they're intense. So I'm actually gonna decide to go with geothermal for that very reason. We are going to level some terrain and add these right here. Just sneak these down. I like that we're dipping these down because it won't be a feature in the horizon. <laughs> so that is something that uh, you gotta think about. How does this, how's this gonna look? Because I didn't go quite far enough, the road is coming up and most of the time you can just back your road off and come in and smooth a bit more. 
Uh, obviously the power plant here is a little bit raised up, which is unfortunate, but it's not the end of the world. And I just had to be really thoughtful about how I was placing that road because otherwise it was going to be raised up just a little bit. I didn't want that. So there we go. So now we've got this power facility. Everything's cooking over here. We're looking good. Interestingly, we've got some carryover of the cheese district. One lonely commercial property that I will dezone, put them out of their misery. <laughs> so now they don't have to worry about being sad that they don't have power because they don't have a business. So sorry. <laughs> there we go. So with these, now that we have some additional power, I do want to decommission some of these wind power plants that have been tormenting this part of the city. The noise has just been absolutely horrendous. So now that we've taken that away, we should see some of those issues resolved. So very pleased with that. So we're starting to see some things happen over here. One of the things we're not seeing is our police and fire coverage. Actually, it's not too bad. I think we'll leave it just as it is. Let's look at our land values over here. And you can see that this district is worth a lot in comparison to basically everything else over here even though it's in pretty close proximity to some pretty noxious uses. So that doesn't scare away this district. Uh, so th this district is one that is very valuable, particularly when you add a couple of these buildings in here. The, that's, if we take a look, we've got, it's actually focusing right around our organic and local foods. And look right here, we've got an eco mart, which looks like the little farmer's market. Right here, we've got a Burnt Bean, which is the, uh, the the brand of coffee shop here. Electric Vehicle Charger, Eco Mart, Soy and Lentils. Yeah, lots of, lots of interesting things. And then over here, we get a chance to see... Well, actually, let's point out one thing. So this actually makes a very good point. So I zoned some higher density buildings here. And what you'll notice is that very similar to the tourism buildings where it doesn't really matter what level you're zoning at, you get the buildings you get. It's the same thing with the commercial buildings with the organic and local produce specialization. They level to one level and they are what they are. And there are certain assets in here that people really, really, really like. So one of them, I'm trying to see if any spot right here. This Edison hypercharger. So it's kind of like a, a Tesla supercharger. This particular asset, which looks terrible right here, uh, people will play whack-a-mole for and create parking facilities. So that's something that you could do. You could uh, zone an organic and local foods district, hunt and peck for this building. Uh, this is a two by two building. So you would do a checkerboard of two by two. So let me just, why don't I just show you that quickly? So if we had a flat piece of land, which we do not right here, <laughs> let's, let's make one. So a very nice flat piece of land right here. Come through and we will make a nice district. I wanted to have an, a, uh, an even number. So that is one of the reasons why we are doing this. Come through and just checker this in. And this, this particular asset, I believe, comes in a, in a couple of different sizes, but this is the one that we just saw, so we'll go with this. We'll add that in here. And we don't even need a road connection to make this work. Why don't we also add one over here and see what happens? So in the gist of this is if you don't get what you want, you just start playing whack-a-mole. You delete the buildings until you get the one you want. Okay, and we got two of them. So now we would go through uh, this shouldn't change, but just to be sure I can make them historical and then we can start deleting again. Now, because we have two here, we could add in these here. Okay, and my patience for whack-a-mole is thinning, but what you can see is that you could 
can go ahead and do that and create a parking lot. So there are a number of people that will do this in their builds. I don't have the patience for this. Uh, it's not something that I enjoy doing, so I'm not gonna do it anymore. <laughs> so, but it's, it's something that you could do. So just wanted to make you aware of it. Goodbye, superchargers. Bon voyage. All right, so that actually brings up something interesting. And uh, there are policies that also come with this particular DLC. Okay, so there are policies that we really should enact. So one of the policies that you get with this particular DLC is recycle plastic. Recycling centers work with 20% efficiency, uh, enhanced if, if it, efficiency, $100 of recycling center per week. That's pretty modest. So we're gonna enact that and that's going to dramatically increase our garbage processing status. In fact, we'll look here and you see it going up. Whoa, wait, wait. Oh, capacity 460, 460,000 units approximately. Let's get rid of that policy and see what happens. So we're getting about 30,000 units bump for a pretty modest amount we have six of these so let's see if that actually makes sense so this is six hundred dollars a week and it is going to give us the extra processing rate of approximately one of these so that's twice as much uh, but you get a little bit extra out of what you already have so i guess it's up to you that's interesting it's an interesting thought experiment to go through these uh, next, let's take a look. I am going to enable that. I think it's pretty inexpensive. I'd rather place less of these buildings, if at all possible. Next, we are going to take a look at a couple of other policies. Uh, there are three more. Combustion engine ban, which will... Basically, only electric cars are allowed in an area unless it's your origin and destination. Or de your origin or destination. So we're going to, we're going to add that here. Uh, electric vehicles will require everyone in this area to get an electric vehicle if they if they if they own a car at all and then we have filter industrial waste which uh, reduces the ground pollution uh, it says by a lot for two dollars per or two cents per or two dollars per industrial building per week so this is actually gonna be a fairly expensive policy but if we take a look at the ground pollution, we're seeing ground pollution here around these buildings. That's about, well, and right here. So this could be beneficial. It's not gonna help us with our industries buildings, only our generic industry. So I'm gonna turn this on. Let's just see what happens. And you can actually see the ground pollution lessening around these areas. I think we might be at uh, where we're gonna be with this, but that, that was pretty impressive. So I'm gonna leave that policy in effect as well. We have some industrial that's fairly close to residential, and I look at that as a very beneficial thing. I think if you were in this house right here, or these, this commercial building rather, you'd be pretty happy, and if you're in this house, now you don't have any, any, any uh, industrial pollution, ground pollution anyway, <laughs> so. You're, you're probably fairly pleased with the city for enacting that policy. So, interestingly, we're starting to see some backup here. I wonder how our traffic's doing. That's 86%. Not, not too terrible. A lot of that, again, is going to be due to the new development in this area. That is to be expected. That happens. So, not going to worry about it. I do want to expand this area a little bit more and maybe take up the rest of this area back here. So we start to reach our, towards our, our, our population goals. So let's work on that right now. Okay, and I just filled in the rest of this with a kind of a loose grid. It is uh, certainly a modified grid but it would be walkable. Some long block lengths in here that I don't love, but you know, uh, sometimes you've gotta, you gotta accept uh, a little bit of imperfection. So we're gonna take this and I'm gonna extend this district out. This is gonna be our little green area. And you'll notice that I have 
encroached a bit on some of our previous development, that is going to cause that development to decommission. So it's something to be aware of. Now I have added a very short distance here. This is unacceptable. That's way too close. And as a result, I'm going to add kind of a frontage road here, which will probably raise the ire of some folks. Uh, but it is a much better design solution here because that throat length was just not long enough and it would cause backup eventually. So we could go through here and try to smooth some of this out. It's probably not going to do a ton because the building pads are just a challenge. So we're going to just live with it here as well. And then I'm going to continue this density. We're going to have density right along this highway. And just so that we have a height that makes sense, what I'm going to do is come here, pull this height. And I'm going to raise this up. There we go. I like that. And now we can come along here and just swoop down with some higher density residential. I like that a lot. We will also come through here, add this, and actually, I see something. We have an opportunity here as well. So we have the IT, actually, no, we're not gonna do that. Uh, so the IT cluster, I was gonna place some of that here, but it just, you know, that is such a tall building. I think that we're gonna avoid that. So this is, the IT cluster is very similar to the, the hotel district in that way, in that the buildings are just massive. Some of the biggest in the game, they almost look like financial services buildings, in my, in my opinion. So now in Emerson Square, you're gonna start to see something interesting. We'll speed this up and look at the buildings that are gonna develop. Regular old, just commercial buildings. Well, we can add both a residential and a commercial specialization. So if we add that here, we are going to see those buildings go away and be replaced with the organic and local buildings. So we could do any combination of that that we wanted. We could have tourism, we could have IT cluster, uh, you, you could have one commercial specialization along with a residential specialization, specialization in a district. So you don't have to feel like you need multiple districts to make everything work. It'll work even with one large district that has two different specializations as long as they aren't the same land use category. Uh, this is what I was worried about. You get some drop off. And what that tells me is that I've got to call a mulligan here. We'll just get rid of that row that's directly adjacent to the roadway because it's never going to look good. Unfortunately, there were a lot of people moving in, <laughs> so we've just lost that. But at least with this, we could add a row of trees or something nice along there, make this a more interesting corridor. And look at the traffic that we see here. It is wild. I'm curious. Let's pop in. We'll take a look at where everyone's going. So we've got garbage trucks, freight, lots of things happening. I think that we could cause some of this traffic to disperse a bit. And the way that we're going to do that is by creating a collector connection. We're going to upgrade this road here. And then we're going to reprioritize where this road is going. So let's go ahead. We will turn this. Actually, we will look at our terrain. That is not going to work. So I was about to send that right up a hill. So what we're going to have to do is use our slope terrain tool if we want this to work. What I want to happen is I want to make a connection over here. So let's slope this. We'll come here, we'll right mouse click at the height that we want to reach. And then we'll come down here, left mouse click all the way up to it. That is a better path, but it is not a good one. <laughs> so I think we're going to live with a bit of imperfection here. And I'm going to do this straight shot along that contour line and then we'll use the curved road tool to make the connection that's very steep that is very steep it'll work but we have to acknowledge that it is very very steep 
And then here's how sometimes you end up with really strange roadway networks and you wonder, how did, who planned this? It probably wasn't planned. It probably was a response to a, a strange situation like this where you don't want to just come right here on a corner. So you're going to try to make something work. Nothing works well, but you got to do what you got to do sometimes. So here, again, we, this is a high speed road and we're going down a hill. Probably not the most suitable location, but things get built in unsuitable locations sometimes. So we are going to go downhill. We're going to try to meet up by the train station because at least it'll give us a bit of length. So same thing, right mouse click at the top, left click at the bottom, and then we'll come in, we'll come into our terrain heights view and use that to help us figure out where this crazy road is supposed to line up. And I'm just going to draw that straight segment in because we can use our curved road tool to figure out the rest. There we go. That is helpful. That is ugly. We are going to need to do some work to make this a little bit more acceptable. So the very first thing that we're going to do is come in here and really look at our terrain and see if there's anything we can do to make this better. I'm going to pull this out at the terrain height that it's at. Try to give myself a little bit more space to feather this out. So the other side wasn't quite so bad, but this one was pretty challenging. I'm going to turn this up because there's a lot of work to do and I just want to make sure that I am not touching the road with this uh, softened terrain tool because if I touch the road, I'm going to get a weird shelf and I'll have to start over. I don't want that shelf if I can at all avoid it. So stay away from the road. Don't let even a little bit touch and you'll be great. Oh, that is as acceptable as this can be. <laughs> We're going to add bike lanes here because we have some bike facilities in close proximity. Hopefully we can get some people out of their cars. And the way that we're going to do that is adding a, a small bike connection here, being thoughtful about our transportation network to try to ensure that we get some good utilization of our alternative transportation options. And now you see that we've, we've lined up a couple of streets where we could have bike lanes, and this is going to be one of them. This will be our local connection through here. Now, normally on local streets, you wouldn't add bike lanes. Generally, the thought is design a local street in a way that would make it possible for anyone of any ability level to be able to bike on that street. It doesn't always happen, but that's the aspiration and the goal. So uh, that would be what I would be thinking if I were designing this. And I'm creating a loop here. So thinking of both types of users, you know, I don't know that the game really differentiates between recreational cyclists and uh, utilitarian cyclists who are, who are biking to get to work or the store. But I think that it's it's important to have both users in mind. And now we're going to prioritize this roadway network because we haven't been. And we need to get this working again as well. So there we go. So now we've got some things happening over here and I'm very pleased. One of the things we don't have happening is bus service, which we are going to focus on now. So we have this biofuel bus depot. I'm going to tuck that away back here by all the weird stuff that we have going on back here. Public works and power generation. Not really all that important that this is close. Granted, there is some benefit. If you have this on one end of your route, clearly there's less what you call deadhead time, which is the time that the, the bus just kind of sits there and uh, commutes to its route. So that is a benefit, but in city skylines, it doesn't really matter. So what we're going to do, I'm going to click on this bus. Look at that. It's already a biofuel bus. Interestingly, if it were not, click in the line details and you can look at the type of bus it is. So we could have just a normal bus, a school bus, if it was a school route, doesn't really matter, it's still a normal bus route, but you could you could, you could, could do that, uh, or have a biofuel bus. Now, this is interesting, looking at this route, it is not well optimized. So we've got a couple of spots where there are just ridiculous numbers of passengers. 
Now, what this tells me is this is just the wrong method of transit here. In reality, we probably throw an articulated bus at this route and increase uh, the bus frequency. In the game, all we can do is throw more buses at it, hope they don't bunch. <laughs> so bus bunching is when you have multiple buses kind of stacked together and that is terrible uh, as well. Uh, it ends up creating traffic problems. Uh, it's nerve wracking for the buses, although sometimes they're nice and let each other out. So you'll have two buses next to each other. The one in the back will create an opening for the one in the front. And that can be very helpful. Uh, that's fine if it's different routes, gives an opportunity to transfer. Not so fine if uh, it's the same route, unless it's an extra bus that is there for overcrowding uh, that has been dispatched there by the transit operator. Anyway, I'm getting way in the weeds. We'll stop talking about that. We'll uh, look at this. There's the bunching I'm talking about. <laughs> so there is bunching. Yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> there is a mod that can help with this if you're on PC and want to not have this happen, uh, but uh, we are not playing with mods. So we are not going to have the benefit of that. Now here we are going to go ahead, we'll zone a bit. This will allow us to get rid of some of these power lines that have really been tormenting us for a while. And I, I don't mean to be overly dramatic there, but they've been pretty terrible. So we will uh, get rid of them and I feel good about that. Okay, now this line that's been running down here, there's not a lot of value in this anymore, so we'll get rid of that. We've got our main connections made here, and boy, is this traffic just extreme. There's a lot going on here. There's bikers. I wish that we could get rid of this uh, this, this cross crossing here. You can see that there are bikes taking it. We could put in an overpass that might help out here. You can see that right here, we've basically created that situation by adding this this bike connection here. We could force everyone down. It's really challenging on a bike. Really reduces the efficacy of the route, so we're not gonna do that. But uh, we might need to, to give this area some more thought because it's this area is single-handedly tanking our traffic flow. Now, part of that is just simply people moving in and you just gotta relax. But part of it is that we've created an auto-centric neighborhood next to a high capacity transportation corridor. So it's not surprising that people would choose to drive here. And then we've added commercial uses, which adds access to a road that was initially intended to provide some throughput. You know, it it happens. I know that it, it, it disturbs a lot of people, <laughs> but it happens. So the other thing is we actually have a lot of traffic coming from this road. We'll add a signalized intersection here. The real problem is this is a cul-de-sac. So what we're gonna do is add what I'm sure people will hate, an at-grade crossing. They happen all the time, and uh, this is no different circumstance in my mind to what you would see normally. So we'll add that here. That is a sharp angle, so that wouldn't be great for trucks, but It'll be just fine in city skylines. And we will get rid of that rock. I'm sorry, Biffa. And we will go ahead and make that connection. Now that at least this isn't a cul-de-sac. And we could try to soften this angle because I don't think we're going to tee into this with another road. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give that a shot because I think that this is an important enough connection. Improving this will provide some benefit. Now this is also not good for freight. In fact, it's so not good. Why don't we take that back? We'll look at our grade here. And at that point, there's so little soil left here. Let's just make our connection and then we'll complete our bus, our bike route over here as well. I don't know how many bikers are gonna wanna compete with the freight traffic, but I guess if that's something you wanna do, now you have the option. <laughs> there you go. We have some options over here for things for ways to get around so now i want to go back to our downtown area because we have some really dense areas over here that i think we could improve with even more density so let's take a look over here i want to take some lower density 
commercial buildings and increase that density. Or actually, uh, not commercial, but uh, IT, or <laughs> lower density office buildings. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come through here. I'm going to cut this off and recreate a new district here. So I've done a couple of things that are interesting now. So first of all, this, oh, Myrtle Heights, this is gonna burn. So there is already a district here, downtown Tutoria, but now I've carved out a bit to create Myrtle Heights. And I can go ahead and add a policy to this. So there is the IT cluster policy, which is underneath office specializations. It's the only one in the game. And what it's going to do, you'll see all these buildings will go away and we're gonna get some really tall IT cluster buildings. So this is a great spot for it because it's close to transit. There'll be a high density of jobs here, new battery technologies. And again, only one place to level up. And then we've got some residential properties here. I think we're gonna get rid of these entirely. Just go straight office right here and watch some of these really tall buildings. Angry Clans Mobile Games. And they're very, very nice looking buildings. So these are IT buildings. Very, very cool. We could go through and add more of them if we wanted to. Uh, it's certainly something that, uh, that you could do. And I think I might expand this district out a little bit. Let's convert just a little bit more of downtown. There we go, Myrtle's taking over. <laughs> so uh, there, I, I'm wondering, what policies are we missing here? I think I know which one. Interesting, I thought it was gonna be high-tech housing, but it is not. Uh, we're gonna add that to this district. And that should make this a little bit a little bit more uh, valuable than the land around it. Not that it is inexpensive anyway. This is seventy-four uh, dollar, uh, seventy-five dollars per square meter. It is outpacing downtown Tretoria. And one of the great things about this district, so you get some nice-looking lower buildings as well. But look at this; that is huge. So is this. These are some of the tallest buildings in the game, and they come with this DLC. And you see it's really spectacular looking buildings really attractive again some of the greenery on the roof really nice looking assets okay so we need to start adding on to our population we're going to develop another neighborhood over here and start to flesh out some of this area that we've kind of been avoiding and this is a fairly flat area if i recall correctly it is until it's not there's a slight slope up this way. And I think we're gonna use that terrain as inspiration. We're also just gonna extend these streets out in the downtown area. There we go, not a lot to see here. And I am on, I am on a bike road kick. We'll take this back because I want that to be a comprehensive network. That is something you'll see in cities is as they attempt to build out a bike network, there will be discontinuous paths and uh, facilities. I, you know, I have to deal with that in reality, in my career. I'm not going to deal with it in the game because I don't like it. So <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna complete our networks. We're getting more or less a grid in this area, but it is a bit modified due to some of the choices that have occurred in the downtown before this. So generally, I, I, I've said this on many occasions, do not overdo your roadway network too soon, but I'm gonna develop this all right away. And the main reason for that is uh, we have population goals. <laughs> so if we didn't have those, I do not have goals of developing this much this fast. And this will be the loose grid that we work with from here on out in this downtown area. And uh, I'm trying to think if there are any other assets that we're, we're going to use some more of the Green City's assets. Just want to see if there's anything that I should be including in this 
today, but I think that we're in a spot now where we just need to to kind of sit tight. Actually, what I think we're going to do now is add in a couple of unique buildings. So yeah, the Central Park would be an interesting asset to work in. I think we're going to try to add that over here. It's just not going to fit all that well over here because we've already created our own Central Park. But what we can do over here is add in some of the other assets that we have available to us. So those assets include this Ziggurat Garden. So what if this were a part of the university? Yeah, it's not going to do exactly. I, I want there to be a, a view. And the university is already really well built out around it. So that's not going to work. The other thing we could do is kind of add it here. Kind of a strange location. This is almost the kind of building that you demolish a portion of the of the city to, to accommodate. We are going to probably go that route. So I want to find, this is the road we have all of the transit on. We also have lease and fire here. We're going to relocate that. We will add this tower, remove some zoning, and then add some new roads behind here. So the reason that we're going to do that, we're going to we're going to actually relocate a lot of things. So this is a, a fairly dramatic redevelopment project. I don't love that this sunk in, but we're not going to have anything around there, so we can just decorate a bit. So you could use this as the elaborate centerpiece of a whole garden complex, or just a building to, to really break up the... I guess the type of thing you'd see in the city normally. Or you could be like Memphis and have it define your skyline. Uh, it's, to it's totally up to you uh, with their pyramid there. Kind of an interesting an interesting thing that they, they, they decided to take, take on. Some very good videos about that. If you ever get bored, learn about the Memphis Pyramid. Uh, and, and kind of on that note, it's always been interesting to me that there are some Greek uh, buildings in Tennessee. Uh, be it the Parthenon or the pyramids. Uh, it, it, Egyptian buildings uh, right there. Um, Greek and Egyptian, both both covered. All right, let's go ahead and make this self-sufficient buildings district and we're gonna add in a whole bunch of density right here. So the, the land values here are gonna be high. We have a lot of transit in close proximity. You get to monorail. There is going to be some noise here. So if we take a look at our noise, not great, not terrible, not great though. But to me, this makes some sense. Look at those visitors just piling in here. That's awesome. And you get these really attractive buildings here adding to our population, which is sorely needed. Now here, I'm going to, I think this little kind of square we're going to develop. And this will again be a green cities district. We will embrace the greening of our city. Now, one thing you could do is you could go block by block and really be thoughtful and careful about how you're placing these. I would highly encourage that. Uh, and in fact, that is something that I have done in my builds is you go through and you just really make sure that whatever you're doing, you really are, are varying things up. If you're plopping buildings, you could do the same thing. You can do it at a, at a really extreme scale, truthfully. You can go building by building. Uh, that is, again, available only on PC if you are using Rico. Uh, but I know a lot of people will decide to do that. So we're going to try a couple of things. So we're going to add self-sufficient buildings. We're going to make this an IT cluster and... We are going to have organic and local produce, a little bit of everything. And we're going to extend this out, I think, one more block to capture some of these buildings that we already have constructed. There we go. So I want to transition the density. So we're going to extend it out just a bit here. Got some low density buildings already. This was at the edge of the city, which is why the zoning is so funky. 
and then we'll come here. Uh, so we could go ahead and uh, lift the high rise ban. I'm curious. Maybe this is something that we should look at over here. Yeah, these, this does have the high rise ban. And you can tell because it's stopping right before it gets to five. So I might take the lid off of a bit of this. So the way that we'll do that, pause it for a second. We'll cut this, create a new district. We'll give this the exact same policy or the, the, the district specializations. And then we'll come into our policies. And here we are going to take the lid off. No high rise ban. In fact, let's do high tech housing as well. We'll see what that does. So what we should see here is some of these residential buildings, which I guess there won't be many now that we demolished them. They are going to start to uh, reach level five. And then we'll go another block beyond that into the Bedford districts so that we get some variation of heights. And then we can start to transition into lower density uses, which will include some corridors where we have commercial activity. Okay, and I just filled things in and don't be afraid to, as you're transitioning density, have a high rise building next to a single family home that happens all the time. Uh, so don't, don't be afraid of that. You need to be able to transition and sometimes your transition is an apartment next to a single family home. So perfectly acceptable in my book. And we have reached our population milestone, but I want to let this spring up just a little bit here because we've got some really cool things happening and I'm really excited to see how it turns out. I also want to pop over here real quick. So why don't we take a look? Things improving with traffic? Not really. So we're going to have to do some more work over here. And I'm wondering if part of that work is making this connection. We, we severed this before, but I don't know that that is benefiting us like it was. So there we go. And we could do some vanilla traffic management here if we wanted as well. Make sure that we have some turn lanes going in. See if that provides us any benefit. Same thing here, dual lanes going in some benefit and then make sure we don't have any stop signs yeah i thought that there might be some but we are not seeing any so it's it's really just kind of a a lot of traffic a lot of people want to get around here unfortunately by adding that road we've added some zoning here and knocked down a bunch of towers that'll help add that fence there then it restricts the zoning to this road in here which is where we wanted it and now we get the dual right-hand turn lane, which is not being used anyway. So <laughs> what are you going to do? And here it looks like we had some of the same issues. Not super critical that we resolve this, but we're here. Why not? And what you see is that we have incredible traffic here now as this arterial, this highway is just backing up. So I'm having this switch so that cars can queue a bit and we're given dual lanes. We're, we're given some space. So right mouse clicking this allows you to set where that begins. And for the most part, we're giving people the ability here to have dual lanes. So this would be a dedicated left hand turn lane, this left and straight. And it's clear not very many people are going straight anymore now that we've opened this up. So again, we have done a lot to our traffic. <laughs> so we're gonna have more work here and we're gonna need to figure out how to resolve. This is really tourism traffic at this point. So, and it's coming from all over the place. At least this does cut it right down to the heart of here and clear up traffic here, but we've got some issues. Really what it comes down to is we need to get this movement to be prioritized and get people away from coming here. But let's make one last trip over here and we'll take a look and you see there's a transition of densities. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. 
and I'm pleased with the way it turned out. And I think we're gonna leave it here. We're gonna take a look at some of the other things from the DLC in the next one, the unique buildings. Oh, we also wanna take a look at this to see where we ended up here. Look at that. Waters clear as day. So we can get rid of some of these garbage, floating garbage collectors. And I'm gonna move these last ones right in front of these water treatment facilities, hoping to capture that trash, the water pollution, <laughs> before it becomes a thing. And it's not letting me get these very straight. You gotta kinda go right above head for some of these. Unfortunately, I'm spending $10,000 every time I move this. Thankfully, we've got 9 million, which is less than we had at the start. <laughs> so there we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> we're, we're looking a lot better, and it's nice to finally see the experience, experience, <laughs> without all the pollution in the water. It's so much nicer, so much nicer. We can slow things down, take a moment and breathe as we watch the traffic build. Things go crazy here. <laughs> so I, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I've enjoyed uh, bringing it to you. If you did, please hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so. And I will see you in the next one after this brief city tour. Take care. Bye-bye.